Now, anyone that knows anything about me knows I absolutely love boats and I love water. And we came down, Dan and I came down to film a pub just out of shot, the Dickens. And what's sitting here in St. Catherine Docks, but a replica Spanish galleon. And I knew immediately it was a galleon upon looking at it, but pronouncing its name is not something I'm so gifted with. So it's the Galleon Andalusia. And any Spanish speaking people out there, please forgive me for my brutalization of your pronunciation. So briefly, I just want to mention it. First of all, make note of how large that flag is because it helps you scale how large the ships really were. Because on camera, it might be a little bit difficult for you to scale how big that is, what with us using a wider frame. This is a replica from the 1600s, but it doesn't make it any less fantastic because they've really done a great job. You can see up there the depiction of the Virgin Mary, right? And that's a very Catholic symbol that they've used there. We would have been uh, Protestant England, Protestant Britain at the time that Catholic Spain, Catholic France and so on were, you know, pretty irritated with us when we was knocking bits out of each other. I feel it's really important to point out that we did not, Britain, England did not win against the Spanish Armada. They sailed home nearly intact. The weather saved the day, right? There was some great seamanship, beautiful word, I know. There was some great seamanship on behalf of the British and we had powerful, powerful cannons that were only effective when we finally got up close. But as you can see, come over here for me. The hull was so thick that we just could not sink them. So we were smashing through the wood to bits. We was tearing the place inside out. Watch out cameraman, there's people. Um, but we couldn't sink them for love nor money. In fact, as I said, it was the weather. Many of the people that died on the ships, they fell on the rocks trying to escape past island uh, later on as they tried to escape to get back to Spain. They could have landed at Plymouth. Now had they not followed the strict rules to stay within the guideline and plans and had they landed at Plymouth, the chances are their military on the ground would have seriously damaged us. Spain was a very, very dangerous country at the time and on land it was probably far more dangerous than Britain. We was the king of the waves and that's the only thing that kept them out. But once again, it was luck and weather that did that. So come over here and just look down at these hatches here. And it's a lovely, uh, I say lovely reminder, that would have been a terrifying, terrifying sight to the average British vessel, which would have felt very unarmed compared with that. Despite having bigger cannons, if you can't sink it, it doesn't really mean much because you're the sitting duck. And with vessels this size, the trick was not to come up by the side of it. The trick was to try and get behind it to take its rudder out. Because if you look at it, trying to have a, trying to have a fair and square fight with something like this is um, it's not going to result in a happy ending for you. Well, despite this being a replica galleon of the 1600s, it doesn't mean we can't get a great representation of what the galleons looked like in the 1500s when they was trying to smash England to bits. Now, I try and avoid using the word seaman as much as possible for obvious reasons, but Sir Francis Drake, despite being a fantastic seaman, was not the catalyst for our so-called victory at all. Though he was great at what he did, too much credit has been given to the English for, quote, winning. That's not really what happened. He said that he would finish his bowls game and people thought that this was because he was so confident in facing the Armada. The truth is that the weather wasn't on our side and we couldn't get our ships out until the time allowed us to. So looking at a ship like this gives us a fantastic insight as to how terrifying it would have been to have not just been the British, but anyone else that sees this powerhouse coming towards you. And let's remember that Portugal and Spain were the true powerhouses of the sea before Britain did their best to catch up with them. <coughs> now, as I was saying, just because it's a replica doesn't mean we can't look at it and relive the footsteps of our ancestors. 
And we should do that on both sides because I feel that the Spanish story is just as fascinating as ours. And too often we believe the narrative that we're instantaneously told. So thank you, Drake, for your efforts. But in reality, we got out by the skin of our teeth. <laughs>